So this is the pipe here. So it goes Edmonton, Burnaby. Mike Laborde is chief of the Whispering Pines First Nation in British Columbia. And he shows me where the Trans Mountain pipeline is buried under his land. I want to own this thing. Le Bourde represents several First Nations, all located along the pipeline route, who are determined to buy it. This is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity, and it'll change the First Nations along these valleys forever. Now, it's hard to find something more controversial in the country right now than the Trans Mountain Pipeline. For some, it means ecological disaster. For others, economic stability. But there's another point of view. Some First Nations believe buying the pipeline could help them build a new relationship with Canada. I'm here in British Columbia to find out what that means. Why do you want to buy the pipeline? Like everybody else wants to buy it. It's profitable. They produce revenue and profit daily. And that profit, Le Bourde says, means more independence. We want to be able to provide for our people. I don't want Ottawa providing for our people. Just stay in Ottawa and do your Ottawa thing. Here, if you want to conduct business, you should be dealing with the band office. For Chief Labourde, buying the pipeline would force fundamental change on relations between First Nations and Ottawa. He says they'd be more like equals. We'd be included in the Canadian fabric. I wouldn't be talking about my band needs water, safe drinking water. We've all heard it. It's true. It's real. We have bottled water here. We have to pay for bottled water because the groundwater isn't safe to drink. It's not safe to shower in. And so had we the resources, we'd be able to complete our water system. And Laborde isn't just dreaming about buying the pipeline. The group of First Nations he represents has had discussions with the federal government. TD Securities has signed on to provide the billions. And they've got a company to operate the pipeline as well. But here's the thing. It turns out that buying the Trans Mountain Pipeline has become a popular idea among First Nations. I think as First Nations people, you know, it's time that we start getting involved in owning these major projects. Shane Godfordson represents another Indigenous group that wants to buy the pipeline. They call themselves Project Reconciliation. What does a pipeline have to do with reconciliation? We've always, uh, you know, been, been on the, the short end of the stick. Uh, a lot of the resources that leave our territory, we've never really been truly benefited uh, from those resources. When you look at, uh, you know, the state of First Nations, I don't think we've really uh, reconciled uh, well, we haven't, for a fact. We haven't reconciled with Canada, that buzzword with Reconciliation Canada. And I think uh, from a business point of view, it, it just makes sense to, to look at economic reconciliation. What do you mean? That means uh, self-sustainability, uh, creating our own uh, wealth for our, our, our families down the road. If you follow the water south, you get to the cold water First Nation. Here, they not only don't want to buy the pipeline, they're scared of it. The biggest concern is, is protecting our sole source of drinking water for, for the membership of the Coldwater Band. Forget reconciliation. Chief Lee Bahan is taking the government to court over the pipeline. He says that's the only way they'll listen to his concerns. I've invited the Prime Minister to come to Coldwater. The invitation still stands. And, you know, I, I, I want him to come look and to see why Coldwater has concerns and issues with this pipeline. The invitation went unanswered. See, that's the existing pipeline, which goes right through the heart of our reserve, right through the middle, from one end to the other. And it's scary, and it's a huge pipe, but it's right beside our water, right, right on top of our water. Because it's... In a country where many Indigenous communities don't have safe drinking water, on the cold water First Nation, people drink right out of the aquifer untreated. 
and the community wants to keep it that way. With the pipeline, when that spill happens, where are we gonna get our next water from? How is Canada and Trans Mountain gonna fix that problem for us? Why do you say when that spill happens? Well, you look at the, the age and infrastructure of the pipeline now. It's what, 50 going on 60 years old? You don't hear Canada or Trans Mountain saying, well, we'll fix that problem and we'll put brand new pipe in there. They'll never do that. It, it's, too, it's too costly. That's why I say, when that spill happens, what's going to happen? Who's going to look after us? Chief Spahan knows there's Indigenous groups who want to buy the pipeline. He thinks the idea is short-sighted. How is money going to help you out when that water gets contaminated? You know, are those groups going to help us with that water? Back in Whispering Pines, Chief Labourde says he also worries about the risks the pipeline poses to the environment. But he thinks owning it is the best way to make sure it's safe. Right now, we don't get any environmental updates, environmental reports. We get most of our news from the news. We have our waterway right next to the pipe. So we want to be able to have, enjoy the equity, first of all, and then have the environmental oversight so that we can rest comfortably that it's being operated safely. That's why we want to buy the pipe. If you bought it, what would that day be? You'll hear me saying, you pee all across Canada, because it, it, it'll be a great day. It'll be demonstrating to First Nations that this stuff can occur in Canada. We can own. In the end, for some First Nations, the pipeline represents a step towards self-sufficiency and independence. But for others, it's a disaster waiting to happen. Isn't that pretty much how the rest of the country is divided? Nick Purden, CBC News, Kamloops, British Columbia.